Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big Baby JTV, man. Ashtray, 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 man. If y'all seen it, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Big Baby JTV, man. We're talking about the Euphoria finale, man. The final episode. Episode 8 of season 2. And I'm going to tell you, before I even go off, before I even start, I'm giving y'all five seconds to go and watch it before I start going, okay? Obviously, this is spoilers. I'm giving y'all five seconds starting from now. Let's go. Okay, so you've watched it and now you're back and I appreciate you for watching it. For those who don't know, I made a prediction video, not video, but podcast. We'll put the link in the bio. Y'all give me five stars. Go support the boys podcast. It's the big broadcast with Big Baby J. But let's talk about it, man. I predicted on that podcast that Cassie would get her quote unquote revenge. Well, goddamn, I was wrong. Plot twist, plot twist for real. So, yes, Cassie did get her mini revenge for one minute where she went on stage trying to cuss out Lexi for basically Lexi exposing her whole family business, her whole life, everything in a play. Now, for a minute, I was kind of with Cassie because I thought it was super tacky and lame for uh, Lexi. To go put on a blast in 4K your entire family business to the world, okay? Now, it was completely out of character for her. And why did she do it? She did it because the way that she manifests pain or hurt or things like that, she represses them. She holds them down. She's more so, I'm just going to let this fester and come out and I'm going to let it out in a artistic way. Meaning, I'm going to let this out in a form of art which is, for example, theater, right? I think Lexi is closer to being the controlling, uh, you know, I'm the boss of this, you gotta do it my way or the highway type of person than she makes it seem. I'm not a fan of Lexi, bro. I'm not a fan of her at all. I don't rock with it. I don't rock with it. I'm more so on the Casey side. People might hate, but I'm more so a little bit on the Casey side, you know? But... That makes it even more interesting because what happened with Casey is that she snapped and she almost, you could maybe describe it as a nervous attack, as a panic attack, as just lashing out, being a whole Karen in these streets. Yes, Cassie is a Karen and yes, I'm shocked that I'm siding with a MF and Karen, but hey, it's 2022. It's a weird year, but yeah. She goes off, tries to essentially embarrass Lexi in front of the show. And actually, at the end of it, it actually made Lexi look even more validated. Meaning, the crowd saw how rude, disrespectful, and Karen-type mentality that Cassie had that they quickly sided with Lexi. So much so that Lexi and Cassie's mom came up to the stage and borderline apologized for Cassie acting like a brat, you know? And the show went on, so that was pretty cool, right? What was also interesting uh, as well is I don't even know this character's name. I just call her blonde crackhead or blonde heroin bitch. That's what I call her, okay? Yo, I'm not trying to offend nobody, but that's how I feel. She helped Fez and Ashtray because her ex, which was the blonde, uh, sorry, which was the brunette or brown haired crackhead that's what i call him uh was trying to snitch fez and ashtray out he was recording their conversations so blonde crackhead helped fez and ashtray by not necessarily snitching but by putting it all on her ex-boyfriend which was brunette ashtray aka takashi 69 now we move on to the other scene that I really liked. A big scene that I liked is when Maddie finally got her revenge. So why Cassie's being a Karen in these streets, right? Literally trying to expose and hate on her own sister on stage. Maddie gets the get back and she's like, huh? Huh? You want to know about being a bitch? You want to know about being disrespectful? And Maddie's fine ass went and beat up Cassie. She flung her head on a wall and I was like, yeah, that's what's up. This is what we needed last episode. Why didn't y'all do that in episode seven? But hey, it is what it is. 
right? I really like the fact that this show addresses father relationships, right? That's like a big plot and a big theme within the show. And we see that especially when it comes to Nate and Cal, right? So Nate, angry, piece of trash, just terrible character. He's basically was the villain for season one. He was, he's a super villain. He's a super gremlin, right? And at this point, he finally goes and confronts Cal, right? And in this scene, you see that Cal is really in his natural habitat. Cal is... He's a he's bisexual or he's gay. He's one of those. He's very fluid, like his son, right? But you see that Cal is finally happy because he's living the life that he wants. He's around T girls. He's around gay men. He's doing his ting ting. That's what he likes. It is what it is. I'm not here to judge, right? So then Nate comes in and is like, "Hey, I don't want to even talk to you like this. I don't even want to have a heart to heart, man. I just want revenge." And you see him pull out the 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 you know the pistol right you thought it was gonna be russian roulette nope nope nate went to snitching right so i think in this case it's kind of good um cal was not a good father or a good parent and it was very obvious because his son is not a good man period right and that's a way to know if you're a good parent or not how your kids come out they're a reflection of you and at that point, it got very, very obvious that Nate is almost trying to revive himself and almost trying to go in a more positive direction. So this is an example of a good character arc. Now, this was a season finale. We don't know how he's going to be acting moving forward, but I do like his character arc, how he done switched up. He was nice to Jules. Uh, in episode seven and return the tapes and all these things he seems to be changing as a man improving a little bit as a man but who knows all of these kids are quote unquote kids they're 18 right and talking about kids man pff, ashtray man ashtray went out as a g if you guys don't know ashtray got shot by that swat team and he's dead but the way he went out reminded me of Tony Montana, right? The thing about Scarface, right? Say hello to my little friend. But Ashley was a real one. Um, it's very traumatic to see how, you know, Fez, his big bro, his basically his pops, that was his father. This goes back to the father theme we've been talking about. Saw his own son die really in front of his eyes. But he saw his son hold it down better than 99% of people he knows, right? And then what they did, the director of this this uh, episode, he juxtaposed it or she juxtaposed it with when Rue's father died and how she was talking about, you know, the loss of a loved one and all these things. And then you had that juxtaposed with Fez seeing Ashtray get killed. So it was a cool artistic piece. You know what I'm saying? You can tell that the writers really, really thought of this moment. And in my eyes, I thought it would be Fez who would be going. But they got rid of Ashtray. And, you know, I at first I thought it was awkward. At first I thought it was weird. Right. But then it kind of made sense around the end. You're like, OK, damn, somebody has to go down, especially in the season finale. Somebody has to go out and I doubt that they would make it Fez. But I thought, OK, if they have to get rid of somebody, it's Fez in this moment. But Ashtray, rest in peace for real. You know, do I think that Fez goes to jail and spends most of the next season in jail? Yes, 100 percent. That's what's going to happen. But it's going to be very interesting because Fez didn't, he didn't kill the, uh, you know, ex-boyfriend crackhead. No, nah. it was Ashtray, right? Wild, wild but true, right? Could, could Fez be in season three in jail for a little bit? How much fast forward are they going to do? We'll see. We'll see. But around the end of the episode, right? You have Rue talking about how she spent most of the year uh, sober. You see her reconnecting with Elliot. I think her and Elliot are going to date eventually. I see her and Jules not being friends like that no more, possibly being enemies, right? 
because uh, I could tell the Rue was still a bit upset about things. And what was really interesting to me, the last real scene that we see in this episode is when Maddie tells, uh, you know, Maddie, not Maddie, sorry, Cassie tells Maddie that her and Nate just broke up and Maddie just turns around. I don't know about y'all, man. Maddie's fine as hell. She fine as hell. You know, I'm on my caveman shit right now. She is fine. But Maddie looks back at her and says, this is only the beginning. Right. She's alluding to Nate being on and off. Nate being unstable. Nate being somebody who will be on and off with her. Meaning this is just the beginning of what you're experiencing. But also at the same time, it alludes to what's going to happen next in the show. I believe that this show is going to go wilder, more ratchet, more crazy. I wish Ali was more so in this episode. He wasn't really there. I wish that Rue's mom was more so in the episode and Rue's sister. Uh, I wish the cat had more with the script this year. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Cat Tech's boyfriend, the one who really exposed Nate and cheesed Nate uh in episode seven i wish he had more um on his script but it's hard to put everything together right this one is more this episode is more focused on lexi and her experience which i've noticed the last two episodes were and nate nate as well and fez so they focus on them three character arcs we'll see what happens we'll see what happens i'm a fan i think this season was really good um is it would i say that it's better than last season I don't know. I don't know, but I really like the last three episodes of season two. Big Baby J TV. Let me know what y'all thought of the show. I'm out.